The term Roman art immediately calls to mind classic architecture complete with Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian columns, along with perfect white busts of the important men and women of this era. But Roman art encompassed much more. In fact, Roman people gave an artistic touch to almost everything they made, including coinage, buildings' walls, sculpture, metalwork, glasswork, and jewelry. The bulk of the Roman artistic legacy we know today was created between 800 BC and 500 AD. It was during this time that authors such as Cicero, Virgil, Ovid, and Horace would create a legacy of philosophical thought, poetic style, and mythology that played a big role in Roman art and is highly influential to this day. One of the interesting things about Roman art is that these artists were quite open to new ideas and influences from other cultures and empires. Early Roman art, around 800 BC, drew heavily from Etruscan art. Etruscans were the powerful people in Tuscany, north of Rome. Firm believers in the afterlife, much of the Etruscans' artistic energy was dedicated to making beautiful funerary objects and decorating the dead and their burial places for their next, eternal life. Romans were skilled with clay sculpting and bronze work. They also had a preference for realistic portraiture. Romans drew heavily from Greek styles, but there was one thing that set the two styles apart quite distinctively. Even though Greek art became more realistic as time went on, Greeks overall preferred their subjects highly idealized. This meant that even a subject with a double chin and crooked eyes would be represented in his sculpture as the epitome of beauty. As a result, it was pretty difficult to tell exactly who a given sculpture was supposed to represent, since they all supported such perfect features. Roman artists had a much more realistic outlook and tempered idealistic Greek influence with that of the ideas of nearby Etruscans, who preferred a healthy dose of realism in their artwork. As a result, the Roman bust would actually bear a good likeness to the subject. Double chin, pockmarked face, receding hairline and all. Of course, Roman artists would embellish the final output enough that his patron, the subject of his art, would appear dignified and impressive despite shortcomings. Relief work was one of the distinctive artistic styles that developed in the Roman Empire especially after Augustus came to power after Julius Caesar's death. Augustus was a shrewd man and capable ruler who knew that art was a great way to communicate with the masses, regardless of whether they could read or write. More importantly, art could be used to subtly promote himself as a representative of the gods. Augustus's divine right was illustrated in many reliefs depicting the ruler interacting with the gods of Roman mythology and asserting his power in memorable scenes of victory. These reliefs were common on temples and other public buildings in ancient Rome. In addition to reliefs on buildings, powerful Romans had their portraits and initials engraved onto coins. As well as expert sculptors, Romans were prolific architects, and by the middle of the first century, the first concrete revolution had occurred in Rome. The discovery of concrete made the widespread construction of arches, domes, and vaulted ceilings possible. Among the most famous architectural elements ancient Rome is known for are decorative columns, arched aqueducts, bridges, public baths, and spacious domes. The Pantheon features one of the most impressive domes in Rome. The Pantheon was commissioned by Emperor Hadrian to honor all Roman gods and was completed in 125 AD. Its dome was constructed with over 5,000 tons of concrete and measures 142 feet in diameter and 71 feet in height. The opening at the center of the dome is called an oculus and illuminated the marble interior of the Pantheon at the same time as drawing attention upwards towards the heavens. The Pantheon's heaviest materials are at its base. The progressively lighter materials were used towards the top of its base and dome. The temple endures as an architectural wonder to this day. Romans loved their entertainment 
and the Colosseum, completed in 80 AD, seating around 50,000 people, was the greatest amphitheater in Rome. The Colosseum showcases the three styles of columns used throughout Roman architecture, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Doric columns are the simplest variety. Ionic columns feature scroll designs, and Corinthian columns are the most complex and decorative. The Colosseum's second and third levels featured statues of gods and goddesses standing under each impressive arch. The Colosseum featured such advanced architectural features as an underground system of passageways and trap doors, drainage pipes, and a retractable roof. A majority of perishable Roman art from the period before 79 AD was destroyed when Mount Vesuvius erupted. But wall art, thankfully, survived to a surprising degree. Archaeologists have uncovered wall paintings in Pompeii homes that have been well preserved by the volcanic ash. White, yellow, black, and Pompeii red were the most commonly used colors in the murals, which decorated the interior walls of homes with scenes of nature, mythology, and status-enhancing scenes like expensive stones and scenes of Greece. These scenes created the impression of spaciousness in the home of the patrons who commissioned them. Pompeii murals attest to Roman painters' keen eye and the contrast between light and shadow. Much of the Roman art we have from the 3rd century AD and later years were preserved in catacombs and Nero's palace. Scenes of battle and punishment were more common during this time. When they switched from chisels to drills, this made sculpting much easier, which made this art form increasingly more common. This was also the time when Christianity was sweeping through Roman society, and Roman art began reflecting Christian themes. This focus on divine mythology was accompanied by a gradual shift to more stylized art, which would characterize later medieval art. After Emperor Constantine moved the empire's capital from Rome to modern-day Istanbul, the death toll sounded for Rome's high status and the abundance of Roman art. As Rome slowly lost its status as the hub of the empire, Roman art began to decline as well, and gave way to new styles and techniques. Byzantine art would fill Rome with cathedrals and basilicas inspired by the designs and construction techniques of ancient Rome. More than 800 years later, Roman art would inspire an entirely new era of breathtaking art during the Italian Renaissance.